Yo, welcome back family. My name is Jamal Abiyade and you're now watching my YouTube channel. I know you're making some beats or trying to figure something out, so let's get right to it. So my last couple videos have been on samples, how to manipulate samples to make them work for you. But you guys kept on asking me specifics about how to chop, so I said I might as well do a video. The new update, Logic 10.5, it has crazy features. The best one is the new Q sampler. So quick sample is how we're gonna do our chop today. And I'm gonna take you into a deep dive into different things you can do in Q sampler and how to set the Q sampler to chop any loop or sample for your liking to get really creative. If you're not already a subscriber, please go ahead and subscribe. And if you are a subscriber coming back, welcome to the family. Let's get into it, Jamal Abiyade. Before we get started, this video today is sponsored by DistroKid. If you don't know, DistroKid is a distribution service that gets your music on all platforms. Aren't you guys tired of promoting your song on Instagram and Twitter, Facebook, whatever, and saying song comes out Friday, songs comes out Friday, and Friday comes and you have no plays? That old time of getting no plays on your release date is no more. DistroKid has a new feature they call HyperFollow. HyperFollow is a completely free promotional tool and completely free for anyone who has a DistroKid account. As we all know, social media is crucial right now to have a music career and it's crucial that we have a link, one link that goes to all your streaming services and HyperFollow provides that. As soon as you get done uploading your latest banger to DistroKid, you can start your marketing promotion right then and there. DistroKid will provide you a link for all your releases and this is what your HyperFollow page will look like. Here's a dope thing about the HyperFollow link. When you press pre-save on Spotify, it automatically makes them follow your page, follow the release so when it drops it comes on their Spotify and you get your fans email. Three in one, you can't be mad at that. That's automatic promotion, easy. If you don't have a digital kit, go ahead, use my VIP link, click the link below and get 7% off. It helps me out too, so it's a win-win for both of us. But enough of all that, I know you're making dope music to put on digital kit, so let's get back to this video. So let me show you guys the basic of chopping up a sample in Logic Pro X. So right now I'm working on a project and I was playing with the sample and the sample's cool, but I thought if I chopped it up a little more, it'd have a more retro effect into it. I'm doing something very unique. Usually chops are for hip hop, like boom bap kind of songs. I'm actually making a, a, a New Orleans bounce song. So this is what the song I have so far. We want you ladies just to throw your hands in the air. The sample line you're using is Faith Evans Reasons. I put the original song in the link below because I don't want to play it and get copyrighted. I already have the sample looped up right here, but I want to show you guys from scratch how to do something like this. So let's do that. If you're in a session, you're probably in an empty session. You can go up here to the media tab, press it, or just press F. F works, pops in the media tab. All files, all files. I'm going to go there. I can type, type in Reasons. And I know this is it because I just downloaded it. So let's drag it in here. When you're trying to chop up a sample, first thing you have to do is find a sample. That's a whole different video in itself. You can use accounts like Splice. If you're like me, you're cheap. <laughs> and you just go on YouTube, find what you want to use. I heard this song on the radio and I was like, that will be dope to sample. But so first thing you want to do. Is use flex time. I know because I listened to the song already. I want the intro. So you see the file. The first thing you have to do is find the part you want to cut. To do that, you have to press this DNA button right here. This DNA button right here is flex time. Click it, it analyzes, it finds transients. What flex time is does is really dope. It finds every part that you they think the chop will be perfect to start or end at. As you can see, it has a whole bunch of lines, right? So I know I want my chart to start somewhere up here. I want my chop to start when the piano starts. So somewhere right there. So if I make it a little bigger, a little smaller too. Make oh, see the piano starts right there. So boom, piano starts right there. You see, it has two lines. I'm gonna pick the second line. Second line, what all you have to do is click it. You see this little uh, triangle with this plus sign? Click it. Boom. Makes your first cut. That's where your um, loop is gonna start. Your sample is gonna start. Right there. So that's it. So now I have my two spots where it's gonna start. I was gonna start right here, it's gonna stop right there. I got it perfectly on the, I think I got it perfect. I start right there, stop right there. And I want that to loop over and over again. So what I do is hit control, boom, click it. And it says, slice at flex markers or slice at transient markers. You wanna slice at the flex markers because the flex markers are what you sent. So do it again, control, click, slice at flex, boom. I got this first part that I want perfect. I'm gonna click this first end, delete, 
click this first in delete I'll grab this and drag it to the front you got to make sure it hits the front it is hitting the front all right here's the thing I have my four bar loop but it's not As you see, it's not matching the four bar loop. What do I do to make it match the four bar loop? While it's in flex mode and keep it in flex mode while you're doing all this stuff, go to this corner. You see this little bracket with these two sound waves? I can pull it, I can drag it, look at that. But do not hit this part. You don't want this, you want this bracket right here. Push it in till it hit the four bar mark and watch this. Sped it up a little bit. Perfect. And what you can do too, you can hit speed. Ooh, that's the wrong one. Hit speed. Some of you guys probably already know how to do it. Some of them didn't, so I had to start with that. And some of you guys are gonna have a loop that's already perfect. You don't even have to do this part, but just in case I showed you. Now let's get into the chop. So Logic 10.5 had a great update. It was Q Sampler, the Quick Sampler. And Quick Sampler is honestly a blessing. You can use it for samples, loops, or 808s, and it works perfectly. So let me show you how to do that. All right, so now that I have my loop made, what it's time to do? It's time to chop it up. It's time to use the Quick Sampler. So let me show you how to do that. You press Option, click it, and drag it over here to this gray part. Option, click it, drag it to this over here. It says create new track. It says quicker sampler original, quick sampler optimized. You want original. So, boom. When you drag it into, into quick sampler, this is what it's gonna look like. If I press Command K, it brings up my keyboard. So Command K, I have my keyboard, let's get it. So if I hit this, See, has it all chopped up, but it's chopped up real funky, as you guys can see. I don't want that. That's because the chops just are on transient mode. You don't want it on transient mode. What I do my chops as, I do it as equal division. You don't have to do that. You can do beat division. Beat division does it by the beat of the song. The beat of the song. Like, you can literally count it out. Like, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I don't like that. I like equal division, but these are that's all preference, for, honestly. And equal division, you see the slice is 16. I take my slices down a little bit. I'll take it down. All right, cool. So you, if, you, if you heard me click these buttons, it clash. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to hurt you guys' ears, but that's ugly. It's clash. This poly right here is on 16. Take that to mono. That's a must. Your volume. Bring it all the way up to zero. Get really quick, I wanted to do this voiceover because I forgot one important rule. I can move these yellow pads. See, all I have to do is move it forward. Let's say I want this play long. I could delete this as well. I can double click it, delete it. And if I click it right here, it adds one. So I can move it, double click it, delete it, click it in here, in this section, add. Just a little rule of thumb. I didn't want to um, do this video without putting that in it. Now, if we're going through quick sampler, what else do you need to know quick sampler? Right here is the attack. The attack is up really high. Think about the attack. If you bring it down, so if I take this first dot and pull it over here, the more you pull it to the right, the softer it gets. So I pull it a little bit because you don't want it so hard, but softer it gets. So what else you should know about this? Maybe the pitch. So for pitch for me, I don't like pitching my stuff in Q Sampler. I like pit pitching my sample either before or after Q Sampler. That's just me, that's a preference, but I'll show you guys how to do it. Here it says chorus. If I pull it down this way. I'll pull it this way. So one thing to remember is, so if I play it really high, let's see if I play it really high. This is why I pitch my stuff in other plugins and not this. When I put it high like that, it sped, it sped the tempo up. The BPM tempo of the track did not change, but since I sped it up, it tends to get fast. When I just pull it down, it tends to get slower. How do you stop that? Well, Quick Sampler has this follow the tempo over here. All you have to do is hit flex time. It's, it matches the speed no matter the um, pitch, but if I take it off, it's fast. So that's just a fun fact to remember. When you're changing speeds, remember to put that flex time, follow tempo on 
in this Q sampler. And if you want to change the speed, you can let's say you can go to zero, the speed over here, that's one. That's how it's really played. But you can speed it up, you can slow it down. If you want to keep the note and change the speed, that's how you can do that over there. Another important thing before we chop it up, if you see this right here, it says the start key. I keep my start key on C1. That's just where you want to start on your keyboard. If you're using the keyboard, I'm using this one, Command K. I'm using this one, but if you guys had a keyboard, you can you can change the start key and chromatic. Chromatic is you play you use the black and white piano keys to play the samples. So, but you can change it to white or black. I usually play all my keys on black, I mean white, because it makes it easier for me. And as you see, you can do it black if you want to. It's all up to you. You see, if I press A, it doesn't work. So do what you want to do. I put it on white. That's that's preference, you guys. Don't don't worry about that. That's all preference. I got my Q sampler right there. I have my keyboard right here, so you can see everything. Let's get started. You can press R to record. Here we go. Woo! There we go. Wait, let's see how that sounds. Let's see how that sounds. Uh, let's get this out. I think I missed this note. I'm gonna pull it forward a little bit. So I clicked it. I can put Command A. That highlights everything. Q, quantize, put everything on B. Let's see. It. It's a little early. Let's bring this back a little bit. That's a oh, that's a good thing about. So the good thing about when you do this MIDI stuff, you can just move it. And I can see this whole thing is off. I can move that back. So so that's the chop, you guys. That's the chop, you guys. And let's say you let's say I do want to change the pitch now, right? I want to mess with the pitch a little bit. So let's mess with it. So you remember it's acting slow. What I do, I hit the flex, flex time, put it on beat. You could use fine to make the make the pitch more accurate. Let's hear what these drums sound like on it. And I already have some drums set up for my session. This is how originally this loop sounded. And obviously, you guys, you can flip it way more than this. This is a basic flip. I'm gonna um put the attack up on these attacks so you can hear the chops a little harder. Some reverb on this to make it bigger. I hope you guys learn how to use the chops really fast. I try to make this video really, really quick and really easy so you can go use these chops into your beat right now. And chops are really easy to flip. There's three drums that can make this a boom bass song. Watch this. And if you guys don't know how to put your uh, drums together, drum kick together. Go look at my one of my other videos and I actually, I'll put the video up here, click it, learn how to put some drums together right now in Logic 10.5. Oh my goodness, these kicks hit in a shake. Uh, before instruments, watch me make a quick boom bat beat right before your eyes. It's cool, but it's not dirty enough for me. Let's make it deep. Look how big of that switch was. All I did was change it from this, four. That fit better for those other drums. Make it deep. And just by the pitch, it's a whole different feel. This feel is more hip hop. Simple changes right there can make the difference. That's how I use the quick sampler to chop up samples in Logic Pro 10.5. With that being said, my name is Jamal Labiade, and this has been another video. I hope this video was quick for you guys so you can get back to making some beats. I will see you next time, same time, every week with another tutorial, something dope. Let me know what you guys need next.